Hello, everyone. We are live today uh, taking a look at Hurricane Ian, which is making its way over Cuba and up to Florida right now. My name is Ian Pechnik. I'm Ian, our communications director Cuba at Flight Radar 24, and I am joined by Gabriel Lee. If you've listened to our podcast, you know my voice, but perhaps not my face. Uh, and if you've seen any of our videos that we've produced on the YouTube channel before, you definitely know Gabriel's uh, face and voice. Thank you all so much for joining us today uh, in the morning in the U.S. time, afternoon in Europe. And what we wanted to do today was take some time to work our way through uh, what the hurricane hunters are doing, what aircraft they're using, how those aircraft work. And then uh, we'll talk about some of the ways that you can follow both the, the hurricane hunter aircraft as well as the storm itself and its impacts on aircraft throughout, um, throughout the storm's track as it moves north through Florida. What we've got on the screen, I'm gonna make it a little bit easier to, to see the screen. We'll make us smaller and, and the, the flight bigger. Right now, what we've got pulled up is one of the Hurricane Hunters, and uh, that's the Gulfstream 4, the registration is N49RF. So if you're at home, you wanna follow along, please, please feel free. Uh, NOAA has nicknamed their aircraft. They've got three. Uh, one of them is the Gulfstream 4, NOAA 49, and that one's nicknamed Gonzo. They're all nicknamed after Muppets. Uh, you've got NOAA 42, which is one of, their, um, one of their P3s, which is right here, working its way through the storm. So those fly through the actual storm itself, um, flying through the eye. Obviously, um, Low-level tracking of these particular aircraft through a hurricane over Cuba is going to be a little spotty, but as it moves north, the tracking will um, the tracking will get better. And ADSB actually does a, a fairly decent job of making its way through a hurricane. We've had some some very interesting tracks of hurricane hunter aircraft uh, in in past hurricanes. So NOAA 42 is nicknamed Kermit. And then there's NOAA 43, which is nicknamed Miss Piggy. So, so three, um, three NOAA hurricane hunters named after, nicknamed after Muppets. There's also the U.S. Air Force hurricane hunters, and those are with the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron. Those all fly under the call sign Teal, T-E-A-L. And so there's 10 of those aircraft, and they all start with, uh, they, they start numbering at 70. So it's Teal 70 all the way through Teal um, 80. But I think there might be uh, different numberings in there. So you can just search Teal or NOAA, N O A A, to follow any of these particular aircraft. And so what these aircraft are doing are flying through the flying through the, the storm. NOAA 49 flies around and above the storm. And so what that will do is find out where the storm is going. They want to find out what the atmosphere is like in front of, on top of, and around the storm so that they can make better predictions about where the storm is going and what the what the weather um, is, is going to be doing um, ahead of the storm and, and how the storm is going to develop. It's a heavily modified Gulfstream with uh, multiple radars included. And you can see uh, in the, the tail here, there's a kind of a, an appendage uh, on the empennage for, for this aircraft so that you can see there's um, multiple, uh, multiple strong weather radars to, to see what's happening below, below this aircraft. Right now, they're at 38,000 feet. They often fly at 43, 45,000 feet to, to make sure that they're above the storm tops. On the complete opposite side of things is NOAA 42 and 43, as well as the U.S. Air Force Hurricane Hunters. Those aircraft are flying into the storm. Um, and you can see uh, on, uh, on their uh, Twitter page, the NOAA Hurricane Hunters page, as well as the, the U.S. Air Force Hurricane Hunters page, you can often see videos of them penetrating through the eye wall of the storm. And, and those are always very uh, fascinating slash terrifying, depending on how you feel about, uh, about certain things. And so they're flying through the storm. And one of the, the main things that they do to collect, uh, to collect data is using uh, drop sounds. So these are um, two 16 inch tubes, um, uh, about uh, four inches around. Um, so uh, Gabe can help me convert that to, to centimeters very quickly. Um, but uh, 
under 10. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so what those do is those contain um, all types of weather sensing data and they are dropped out of the aircraft through, through a tube in the aircraft and they fall through the storm. So they go uh, to the lower, la lower levels and layers of the storm where the aircraft, where the winds and the turbulence would be even too much for these particular aircrafts. So they're flying through the storm. There's there's Teal 71 right now, uh, one of the uh, C-130 Weatherbirds. So we're, so they're they're both in the storm at the moment uh, as it moves its way toward towards Florida, and so these aircraft are are dropping sensors into uh, into the storm to gather weather intelligence, and those devices report back. And you can actually go to a website um, outside of Flight Radar 24. I, I know there, there are other websites that exist uh, called Tropical Tidbits, and all of the data that's coming back from these aircraft, uh, all of the weather data that's coming back from these aircraft is being reported in near real time on, on that particular site. So with multiple aircraft, I, I think it would be interesting to check out one of the things that we can we can do on Flight Radar 24, which is go up to the to the top right of your screen and select um, map views and then select multi-select. So if you click on multi-select, you can follow up to six aircraft at a time. So we'll find NOAA 49 up here, and then we'll find NOAA 42 down here, and then we'll find Teal uh, 71 right here. And what we can do is click this button over on the right hand side that looks like um, uh, an outline of an airplane and then a dashed outline of an airplane. If you click that button, it's going to show you just the aircraft on the screen. And so what you've got is a good representation of all of the science flights that are happening right now throughout Hurricane Ian. How are we looking at, at the hurricane? We have a few different weather products that we have available that shows where the hurricane is. Um, these are weather layers that are available with a, a gold subscription. And both of them are, are included with the gold subscription. We have two on the screen right now. One of them is our intense precipitation layer. So I'll, I'll go ahead and just show that one. The intense precipitation layer is just the um, satellite-based uh, precipitation forecast and precipitation return that we get from our weather provider. So that's showing uh, a, a satellite-based picture of where storms are, and that's a global a global picture of the weather. So the, the intense precipitation layer works across the globe. And you can see storms um, in the oceans forming, moving towards land. You can also see where the thunderstorms are when you're trying to, to figure out why your flight is delayed. Uh, and then you look over the, the departure airport of the plane you're waiting for, and you realize it's, it's covered in a thunderstorm. Besides the intense precipitation layer, we have a North American specific product that is called our North American radar layer. So the North American radar layer is um, the same uh, radar system that's used by the uh, by NOAA and used by weather forecasters uh, across North America. It contains all of the uh, information from all of the the high resolution radar stations. So this is ground-based radar coming directly from um, the North American radar stations, high quality North American radar stations. And so that covers uh, just um, the US, a bit of Mexico. Uh, it covers south into Cuba, obviously, uh, due to its proximity over Puerto Rico and up into uh, most of Canada. Uh, some portions of Canada are, are not included in, in this particular image. Um, this, this is a much higher resolution radar picture than the intense precipitation layer. The intense precipitation layer is refreshed not as often. Um, this is refreshed every few minutes. And so this provides us with the most accurate picture of what's going on. So you can see uh, teal actually just coming out of uh, the, uh, the eye of Hurricane Ian. And you can see NOAA 42 having gone through the eye multiple times and now making a pass into the outer bands. So this is just uh, one of the ways, especially uh, for hurricanes, that we like to, to follow the aircraft because it offers the most high-resolution um, high resolution 
picture of where the storm is and, and where the storm is headed. We're working on getting high resolution radar data for uh, multiple areas outside of North America. So one of the things that we want to do is make sure that we've got uh, radar resolution like this for, for areas besides North America. Right now, we've included Australia radar uh, that is of uh, similar quality and similar refresh rate, and we're working on expanding that into uh, various, various levels, um, thinking places like Europe and, and South America and the like as it becomes uh, available to us. Um, let's talk about some of the uh, some of the wind layers and things like that that we offer for our, our business subscribers. So if, if you have a business subscription or if you're sharing data a, with FlightRadar24, you obviously get a free business subscription. And so one of the things that that enables is additional um, additional weather layers like winds, uh, air mats, sig mats, high level significant weather. And these are all forecasts used for flight planning. So we can come over here and look at uh, the, the forecast for Hurricane Ian and see that that's kind of moving in, in this direction and then moving moving on. And then if we look at winds, we can take a look at winds from 1,000 feet all the way up to 51,000 feet. So you can see how the storm is being influenced at various levels and how flights are moving around at, at various levels to see how the winds are affecting aircraft, um, whether or not they're flying with the wind, against the wind, and you can check that with their, with their ground speed. If anyone has questions about any of this, put them in the comments. Uh, we're watching uh, as they go by. We hope that, um, we hope that you're enjoying a little bit of this and, and helping uh, follow along. If you have questions about tracking in the storm in particular, uh, any of the Hurricane Hunter aircraft, how to look for those, or if you just have Flight Radar, 20, Flight Radar 24 questions in general, put them in the chat and uh, and we'll be happy to uh, happy to answer. I always kind of find it kind of fun in here to watch, you know, to sort of look for airplanes that are doing interesting things in and around the storm, especially not hurricane hunters, right? Commercial planes or, or cargo planes. Someone mentioned this Aero Union Flight 270. If anyone wants to check it out, it's 6R270. Uh, that they, They've made this sort of sharp left turn and are flying pretty close to, to where the hurricane is, at the center of the hurricane right now. Be interesting to see what they do, whether they kind of thread the needle through the, through the bands. Yeah, it kind of we, looks like they're doing that. We were, we were talking... Um, I think it was uh, a few weeks ago was the anniversary of the one Delta flight that flew into the outer bands of, uh, of a hurricane that was coming. That it was, I think, Maria that came over Puerto Rico a few years ago and tried to get out um, just through one of the outer bands and, and miraculously stated it. It was uh, one of those things where I, I think the Delta flight ended up on The Daily Show, uh, which was an otter moment in flight tracking, but... Uh, but I would say over the past few months, uh, we've had um, we've had some some even more interesting, more interesting moments. Uh, one of the questions was, "Is Miss Piggy out?" So Miss Piggy is Noah forty three. Let's find out. So up in the search bar, we're going to type Noah. So we see Noah forty two and Noah forty nine are out at the moment. Miss Piggy is not out at the moment, um, but. Uh, but uh, I, I think she will be out later. They've been flying all three aircraft on a fairly regular basis. Uh, will there be go-arounds in Miami? Probably. Um, go-arounds are the, the safe way to, to not have a landing incident. Um, we've, got, uh, we've got a really interesting article written by a pilot um, who, who flies for a major U.S. package carrier on our on our site uh, and we can toss that in the link uh, toss that in the in the chat or or in the description later on and that talks about why go arounds are the safest option um, so that uh, that is something that I'm, I'm sure will be happening later on how do you find the hurricane planes and why do they fly into hurricanes uh, how to find the hurricane planes search for either NOAA NOAA up here we can move our logo away it can go away so we can see the search bar NOAA N O A A and so the NOAAs are NOAA 42 
Noah 43 and Noah 49. So we'll, we'll are the Noah hurricane hunters. So we can put that in the, in the chat and I can spell hurricane, I promise. And that will find you the, the NOAA hurricane hunters. Then there are the US Air Force hurricane hunters. And those are those all fly under the call sign TEAL, T-E-A-L. So if you just search for those, those will um, those will be found that way. So this handy dandy thing, if you click on, if you type anything into the search bar and then you click on this airplane icon, this is the show on map icon. It'll take you right to the aircraft. If you want more information about the aircraft, just click anywhere besides that button on, on the bar. And that'll pull up, uh, if for commercial flights, it'll pull up the departure and arrival information. Um, it'll show you what airline, the equipment and things like that, uh, what type of aircraft it is, the call sign, and then you can click show on map to go, to go follow that particular flight. So that's... Um, that's one of the U.S. Air Force Hurricane Hunters that's flying through the storm at the moment. NOAA 42 is, uh, looks like they did a, a nice little loop. Uh, here, let's see if I can zoom in on that. A nice little loop through the, the outer bands of the storm, uh, taking, a, taking a little look and then flying off uh, into, the, into the outer bands. So those aircraft are flying into the storms uh, to, to gather intelligence about the strength of the storm, its speed, its direction, uh, what is the wind shear like in the storms. Uh, they're getting all of the, the weather data that is necessary to make a more accurate forecast. Um, and, and like we talked about it a, a little bit in the, in the early portion, we, they drop, uh, drop sounds out of the aircraft that contain um, measurement uh, devices and things like that that go down into the lower levels of the storm so that they can then uh, report back via the aircraft to um, and satellite to the the forecasters that then use that information to um, to to make a more accurate forecast so that they can say in you know multiple days in advance where they think the storm is going uh, the area of uncertainty gets smaller as the ac you know accuracy of the the um, the aircraft gets more and more uh, as the accuracy of the forecast because of the aircraft gets gets greater. Can you see the 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 buffering the planes experience in the in the flight? Um, so not generally no. Um, the the turbulence isn't um, isn't enough to to show uh, flying you know the, in the data flying through the the storms. The, the way ADSB altitude, and I guess this is a, a good transition, the way ADSB altitude is, is transmitted is in 25 foot increments. Uh, so you, you have one digit per 25 feet because, uh, because of the way ADSB data is formatted and, and sent to the receiver. So um, you have a, a 25 foot buffer uh, for each digit that is sent. Uh, so it's 25, 50, 75, so on and so on. And that way, um, those small kind of less than 25 foot um, jolts don't really show in the data. So one of the things uh, that, and here, let's check in on uh, Aero Union. They're, they're coming up. Americans going to Miami, they're going, they're going well around. Hmm. Let's go, let's go back to multi-select. Multiple roads to Miami. Oh. There we go. So you've got Aero Union, which is cargo, and American Airlines, which is not cargo, deciding which way to go. And um, the, the phrase boxes don't mind bumps, I guess applies in this particular case. Uh, yeah, but... I, I would love to get the ride report from them. <laughs> Light chop. <laughs> it's interesting to note that, you know, for the moment, Miami looks to be functioning normally. I mean, it's a part of yeah. still ways off, but plenty of intense precipitation around Miami. I guess they're used to that, though. Is the thing. Yeah. So so let's talk about airports. Um, you can, you can search for flights by flight number, call sign, or anything like that, but you can also search for airports by their, their name, by their airport code, or uh, by their IATA code, or by their, their um, 
their ICAO code. So let's start with Miami. And there's a bunch of airports in Miami. And I had no idea that Monkey Mia Shark Bay Airport existed. So these are wow. things that we're all learning together. Uh, so Miami International Airport. So the, the same thing that applies to aircraft where there's a, a quick link button in the search results to take you exactly to that, to that aircraft. Same applies for the airport show on map. Or you can go uh, expand the, the information to find you, your, your show it on map, the arrival and departure boards, find out what aircraft are on the ground. Or you can search for particular flights within the, the search bar. So we're going to go to show on map. And that's going to take us to the airport information page over here on the left side. And it's going to center the airport in the map. So for every airport that we have, we have um, listing information about the airport, uh, what time zone it's in, where, uh, what date it is, because depending on where you are, the date might be different, and the airport's elevation. Elevation of eight feet from Miami, probably not ideal given the, the water situation. Uh, if it is a larger airport, uh, it has a picture showing an overview of the terminal area. Um, those all come through jet photos. So if you have a photo of an airport and there happens to not be an airport available, um, that or a photo of that airport available, please submit from Jet Photos and it'll appear on Flight Radar 24. We've got the weather conditions, the basic weather conditions from the interpreted METAR. And then if you want to read more information about the, the current weather, we also have the latest METAR for that particular airport. So this one was recorded 28 minutes ago. Um, this is the location identifier. So it's the, the ICAO location identifier. KMIA is Miami Airport. This is the date and time it was taken. So the 27th of the month at 1253 UTC time. This right here, 070, is the direction of the winds. 08 knots is the speed of the winds. Visibility was seven statute miles. Light rain right here, few clouds at 1800 feet, broken at 5,000, overcast at 11,000. This is the temperature in Celsius. Yes, American METARs are amusing in the sense that they use both statute miles uh, and Celsius. Um, so that's fun to, to deal with if you're, you know, working cross border and things like that. Um, so this is the, the temperature, 26 degrees Celsius, the dew point, 24 degrees Celsius, and this is the altimeter setting, um, which would be 29.87. And then these remarks are um, tell you about the, um, about the, the weather station itself, the type of the weather station, and some of the, uh, some additional information that we're not going to get into on this particular live stream. But if you, if you want to get into uh, weather in more detail uh, in, in a future live stream, leave us a comment and let us know so that we can, we can plan for that. And we'll, we'll have uh, someone much more knowledgeable than myself and Gabe on to talk about aviation weather, because it's a, it's a topic I know a lot of people are, uh, are, are very interested in. And so that's the, the main airport page. For larger airports, we've, we've brought back the disruption index. So as things change at Miami, uh, and we'll talk about Tampa in just a moment, as things change, those disruption indexes will increase. Uh, the disruption index combines delays and cancellations, plus the length of the delay uh, to, to kind of arrive at a, uh, at a figure that shows how badly the airport is being affected. And then we can go over to the arrivals board and that'll show us how things are going over here uh, as far as arrivals. For, for live flights, you can always click on them, find out all sorts of information, schedule information, the aircraft, excuse me, the, um, the arrival information like terminal, gate, and baggage claim if you're, if you're picking up someone from uh, an arriving flight. And then you can always go to show on map and you'll see that particular aircraft on the map. These are also clickable over here, the departure and arrival boards or the departure, departure and arrival airports. So if you wanna go back to Miami after you clicked on the Spirit Airlines flight, just click on Miami and you're back to 
the airport board. Technical question. How come the icon for the A321 is smaller than the 737? That's a great question and one we get on a pretty regular basis. Um, there are only so many icons uh, that we have available on the current iteration of the site. So we had to make some decisions about which icons would represent which aircraft families and, and moving pieces and so forth. So some of them are, um, they're generally not to scale. Um, and so some of them might seem a, a, a bit off. All that said, we're working on a larger icon set across the site. Um, so that will be um, something that allows us to have more granular control over which aircraft are represented by which icons, as well as offering uh, additional special icons. So um, expanding the icon set and, and making things um, a bit more visually uh, I guess, um, put together as far as the size ratio uh, between 737 and uh, NA321, among other aircraft. What is the difference between the blue and the yellow planes? That is a fantastic question. Yellow aircraft are tracked by ground-based receivers. Blue aircraft are tracked via satellite. So we use satellite-based internet around, or satellite-based satellite -based receivers to track aircraft that are not near our ground stations. So for instance, we can zoom out over the Atlantic Ocean and you can see that all of these aircraft in blue are being tracked by satellite-based ADS-B receivers now. As we expand our, our network, both on the ground uh, via terrestrial-based receivers, which over which we have, I think we're nearing 35,000 ground-based receivers at the moment. And then we're also uh, expanding the availability of our, our satellite-based receivers as well uh, with our partners there. So tracking even more aircraft uh, on land and over the ocean. So let's zoom back in and we can talk about um, Tampa Airport for a moment because it looks like they are going to be, um, they are going to be bearing the brunt uh, of this particular storm. If you have um, the, the weather pulled up, and you click on earlier METAR reports, that will take you through the historical weather for the, the airport, um, showing you how things have changed over time. We don't yet have the, the TAFs, the terminal area um, forecasts available on the site, but we're working on adding those uh, so that you can see what their, the predicted weather is going to look like. But for now, you can go back and view 72 hours of historical weather. Uh, so as the storm passes over, you can see how the, um, how, the airports, um, how the airport's weather changed over time. Is there an option to see the registration history for, for an airplane on Flight Radar 24, like it is shown on jet photos? Uh, I'm not sure. I think you might be referring to the the kind of the history of the, the operational history of the aircraft, what airline it's operated with and things like that. That's not available right now because it's available on jet photos. Um, so that's something that you can find on jet photos if you're looking for where that aircraft was historically operating um, and with which airline. So you can you can find that information over on jet photos by searching the, the aircraft's registration or by searching the manufacturer's serial number for a particular airframe, because that way you'll find it, uh, find its full history. What's, what's bigger, 777 or MD-11? The, the 777 is, is bigger, but I won't necessarily say better. Uh, before we wrap, wrap up for the day, does anyone have any questions? Uh, throw them in the chat, please. And uh, we'll take a few more before we before we beg off uh, as Hurricane Ian moves north uh, and the the hurricane hunters continue to do the work. Aero Union is is just going for it. Yeah. They're uh, they're they're just going for it. And they're the only one that's decided to go up that little alley there. They've they've made their I I'm not really sure where they've got some uh, maybe this way. It's uh. 
It's, uh, even the, even the hurricane hunters are like, what, what are you guys doing? <laughs> UPS came down came down through here, so that's I guess that's yeah. one way to do it. Do we have a blog post about all the hurricane hunters and all that? Uh, we have a, we have a blog post on airborne science, um, and okay. I can I can put that into the that covers not only the hurricane hunters but uh, Sophia, which is sadly set to retire at the end of the month. Um, mm -hmm. NASA's WB fifty sevens that they use to track uh, rocket launches and and recoveries and, and things like that um, and uh, and some other stuff. Some airports do not have a METAR. Why is that so? Some airports, we don't receive a METAR from our weather provider. Um, so we, we try and make sure that uh, we have the most robust weather that we can. So we're always working with them to, to see if we don't have something, if we can get it added. Uh, some airports aren't reporting it to our weather provider uh, so we can work with them to to get that reported and then some some airports just just aren't available for for technical reasons well that's a good question private jets don't always show where they departed or arrived from so um the the arrival and departure information doesn't come from the aircraft that's not part of the adsb data that is sent to to us from the aircraft. What we do is take the call sign and, and we can do a whole live stream on, on how Flight Radar 24 works for sure. What we do is we take the call sign and match that to a schedule that we've received from our commercial schedule providers. Private jets often don't file those schedules because they are private jets. And so we don't receive a routing information for that particular flight. So often, the the arrival or departure and arrival information for a particular private chat won't be won't be able to be known and, and shown, um, but the aircraft will will be shown. Yes, Sophie is being retired. I'm very sorry to say uh, we were we were very uh, very sad about that. Um, I'm looking to having my own <clears throat> excuse me radar uh, with a Raspberry Pi. How does it work? You can go to uh, the the website. And if you click on the top tab that says uh, share data, it walks you through all the steps for building your own. And we will absolutely uh, have a live stream in the future. These are going to be regular things. You will be seeing uh, Gabe and my face and we'll bring in some special guests uh, definitely to talk about how to build a receiver and how to get the most out of a receiver if you have one. Um, and uh, and we'll go from there. What is the rarest plane to find uh, in the radar? I would probably say there's a few ADSB equipped Ford tri motors out there, and I would definitely say that those are the rarest to uh, to find. Um, So I, I think we're going to leave it here for today. Uh, thank you for all of your questions, comments in, in the chat. If we didn't get to yours, uh, we're going to go through them, save them, and, and we can respond in the chat if you want to stick around for that uh, a little bit later on. But thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining us. Uh, I'm Ian Pechenik here at, at Flight Radar 24. I'm, I'm our communications director. Um, you can find me on, on our podcast. I'm here with Gabriel Lee, who you can find across our uh, our video platforms, YouTube most usually. Uh, get what what video is coming up this week? I, I think it's a, a pretty good one. Well, I'm finishing up Singapore Airlines uh, A380 on in the suites class. I'm Maybe not jealous at all. I'm not, I'll just I'm not go jealous at all. New York to, to Singapore via Frankfurt, 22 hours. So the edit's taking a while, but uh, it's ready soon. Ready soon. It, it's actually a real time real time video. It feels like all, it, all 22 yeah. hours. Yeah. Yeah, it almost feels like that. Yeah. So, so look for that later in the week, um, and uh, you can uh, you can find us uh, elsewhere. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat. We'll go through the chat even more and the comments later on, and, and take a look. And we'll be back with more of these uh, in the very near future. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We really appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.